Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to change a photo into something similar to a Richard Amsel hand-painted poster effect. Now Richard Amsel is an artist who did a lot of movie posters from the late 60s through to the early 80s. Uh, posters like Indiana Jones and uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark and Mad Max. Um, so he did that kind of style and we're going to emulate that with this effect. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way before we begin. Number one, I am using uh, Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. I'm also using Photoshop CC 2018. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of these effects may not work as expected. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's hit control N on the keyboard to bring up a new image dialog box here. Okay, and let's name this as a hand painted poster because that's what we're going to make. Now the width is 3,840 pixels, height of 2,160 pixels, 150 uh, pixels per inch resolution, color mode of RGB color 8-bit. Uh, white is our background. It really doesn't matter. We're going to be uh, covering that up anyway. Uh, color profile is sRGB and pixel aspect ratio is square pixels. Hit create and we're now ready to begin. Now you have to start with a photo, of course. Now I've got a link in the description below to the photo that I am using for this effect. But one thing to keep in mind before we actually start with that photo is any photo that you wanna use this effect on, you need to make sure that they have good highlights and good shadows, okay? Uh, if the photo that you want to use does not have bright highlights and deep shadows, then open up the photo first in Adobe Camera Raw and give it good highlights, meaning almost blown out highlights, and deep shadows, meaning nearly black shadows. You need to have that contrast for this effect to look its best. Okay, so with all of that said, let's bring in our photo like so. Okay, and then we need to resize it to fill the canvas. So I'm gonna zoom out here and I'm gonna resize this to fill up our canvas like so, and then re move it around here just so that it looks a little bit better. There we go. Hit enter and I now have my photo here. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is uh, let's just rename this as original so that we can keep track of it. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a duplicate of this layer. So hit control J on the keyboard to bring up a duplicate layer. Now, you may have noticed that here I have the little smart object icon here. That's because when I bring in photos into an already begun image, uh, they I have my uh, settings set so that it is brought in as a smart object so that it can retain its original detail and I don't have to mess anything up. Now, if you haven't done that in your settings, okay, all you have to do is right click on the uh, photo and then uh, make it uh, convert to smart object and then it will be a smart object, then duplicate it. Or you can just duplicate it, then right click on uh, each one individually and make them a smart object. Doesn't matter uh, as long as you've got the smart object. Now, let's rename this top one here as high pass because we're going to give it a high pass filter. Now we go over here to filter, then we go down to other and we go to high pass. Okay, and what we're gonna use for this particular image is a radius of 4.5 pixels, but play around with this until you get um, the detail that you want. Now what you really want is some really good detail here. You wanna just get the detail. If you go too high, Okay, it really gets wonky here, which is too much detail. And if you go too low, let's say about uh, two, you're missing all the detail that we'll need to draw out to make this effect work. Okay, so you wanna get somewhere around, um, around this level. Okay, if you see this level, and uh, looking up the little, little preview window here, uh, a good thing to focus on if, if the subject that you're using this effect on is a person, look at their eyes. You want to get uh, enough detail that you can see their eyelashes and eyebrows and still see their eyeball. Okay, so that's the kind of level that we're going for. Not too much so that it really stands out and not too little that you don't really see it. Okay, hit OK and we now have that high pass filter on here and the next thing that we're going to do is change this high pass layer from a layer mode of normal all the way down to linear light. Click on that and you now have a lot more detail in this photo. See if I turn it off, it's a little blurry. If I turn it on, it's really strong. And that's good. It's bad if you're going to be using this as just a photo because that's way too sharp. It's overdone. But for the purposes of creating this 
uh, hand-painted poster effect, this is what we're looking for, this level of detail. Slightly overdone uh, so that you can see like his individual pores and everything. That's what we're looking for for this effect to really look good. Okay, as a photo, it's hideous. As the effect, it's going to look really good. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now that we have these two layers is we want to create a new layer that's a merger of these two layers. So what we're going to do is hit Control, Alt, and Shift, and the letter E um, twice for me because Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 has a bug on Windows where if you hold the Alt key for anything, you have to hit the next button twice. Very annoying. Um, but there we go. We now have this one layer. So I can turn off all those layers and turn them back on. It doesn't make a difference because this is now our merged layer. So for that layer, let's name it merged. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert our merged layer into a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object, and we now have our merged layer as a smart object. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add three really, uh, actually it's four filters to this, one regular filter and three from the filter gallery. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn, uh, we're going to use the filter that does most of the work for this effect and that is the oil paint filter. So let's go up here to filter, let's go to uh, stylize and then to oil paint. Click on that and you'll see that we're getting this almost painted look to the photo. That is the effect that we're really looking for. Now for this particular photo, uh, after playing around with it a lot, I found that the stylization needs to be 5, cleanliness of 7.5, scale of 10, bristle de detail of 10, lighting is checked, angle of negative 45, shine of 0.2. Now for your photo, whichever photo that you happen to be using, you may need to play with these a little bit, but this is a great starting point and works for most photos, as long as the photos have good highlights and good shadow. Okay, this will work pretty well for most photos. So I would start with this and then tweak as necessary. Hit OK and we're done with that photo. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our filter filter gallery. So filter filter gallery and we're going to start using our um, three extra filters. Now the first one that we're going to do is going to be film grain here and the grain that we're using is going to be three highlight area zero and intensity is one and that is just to give the background this kind of grainy look so that it looks as if this has been hand painted on some sort of canvas and has gotten a little dirty which again is part of the overall effect. Then we're going to go to poster edges Oh, uh, and just to let you know film grain here is found under artistic uh, film grain right there and poster edges is also found under artistic right here uh, and the poster edges effect we're going to use edge thickness of 10 edge intensity of zero posturization of six and that right there is going to give us this thick black outline around most of the uh, person or the subject, whichever you're going to be using. Okay, and the last thing that we're going to do is some sprayed strokes on here to give it kind of a, a, a blurry effect once we finish with the rest of the effects. See, right now it's a little overdone, but it will be good overall. So the stroke length is 20, spray radius of 10, and the stroke direction for this image is left diagonal. You can change that to whatever you think works best for your particular image. Okay. Uh, left diagonal I think works pretty well for this particular image because he's leaning slightly left. If he were standing straight up and down I might do horizontal or vertical. Uh, either way you can play around with it uh, and find the one that you think looks best, best for your particular image. Okay we now have our three uh, filter gallery filters on here. We can hit OK and now we have our uh, nearly finished image here. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we want to merge the, these layers down one more time into a new layer. Okay, so we're going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E again to create this brand new layer. Uh, see, it's just another layer there. And what we're going to do is we're going to name this Edges. Okay, and this is going to give us our highlights because we have the dark shadows, which uh, remember was part of the filter gallery filters. Um, and what we need now is some highlights to help balance those dark outlines. Okay, so we need some highlight outlines. All right, so that's what we're going to do here with this edges. Okay, what we're going to do first is desaturate this. So we're going to hit Shift, Control, and U. 
Okay, to desaturate the edges layer, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to Filter Gallery. So go to Filter, go to Filter Gallery, and we're going to go, um, we got to get rid of uh, two of these. So we're just going to hit the little trash icon down here twice. Okay, we're going to close out Artistic because what we're looking for here is Stylize and Glowing Edges. Okay, and for Glowing Edges, what you're looking for is to get the edges this white outline here, all these whites. So uh, for this particular image, an edge width of three, an edge brightness of two, and a smoothness of two works really well. But what you're really looking for is to get this kind of detail. You want to have uh, highlights. Okay, you're looking for outlines and highlights that you can then place over your image. And this might take a little bit of uh, finesse on your part. You may have to play with this a little bit, do it once, and then come back and do it again, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this uh, is kind of the look that you're going for, where you can just make out some of the finer details, but they're not really standing out too much. Okay, you want some of the um, highlight areas to be standing out. So highlights in hair are good down here and up here. Highlights around the eyes, but not actually within. That's also good. And uh, an odd highlight uh, elsewhere is okay, like on his ear or in his collar. That's all fine. Okay, so then you hit okay, and you now have this. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to set uh, the edges layer mode here to color dodge. Okay, so you want to use color dodge right there, and you can tell that that now has a lot more highlights. See if I turn this off and turn it back on, this makes it look more like it's been hand painted. See if I turn it off, it looks kind of hand painted, turn it back on, and now that looks a lot more hand painted. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, what we could do, let's say that you've done this and you're, the highlights just aren't enough for you, and you don't want to go back and, uh, and do more uh, do it again and, and guess again. What you could do instead of using color dodge, you could go over here and you could use linear dodge. Okay, you could use linear dodge add and that really does brighten things up. But for me, that's way too much. So I'm going to go back to just color dodge, uh, which I think for this image works a lot better. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our foreground and background color to black and white if it's not already. So you want to hit D for default to make them black and white. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a new layer here. So let's create a brand new layer above here. Let's double click on this and name this noise because this image looks too clean to have been hand painted and be one of those old style movie posters. We got to add some more noise to this in order to make it look like it's an old style movie poster. So first thing that we're going to do after we have this new layer named noise is we're going to set this uh, to overlay. Okay, so let's go here to our layer mode and set this to overlay. Okay, then what we're going to do is fill this with a hundred percent with fifty percent gray. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to hit um, Shift and F5 uh, to bring up the fill. Uh, dialog box and the contents here you want it to be 50% gray mode is normal opacity 100% preserve transparency leave unchecked hit OK and you can see that it's filled but nothing has actually changed that's because the overlay uh, mode anything that's gray is not seen it doesn't show anything that's black will and anything that's white will. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do a filter noise and add noise. Okay, so we're going to go here to filter. We're going to go to noise. We're going to add noise. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the amount 50, leave Gaussian uh, as checked, not uniform, Gaussian and monochromatic. Going to hit OK. And as you can see, we now have a, a hand painted poster effect very similar to a Richard Amsel movie poster. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.